Today, I want to talk to you guys about peels because there's a lot of mystery around peels and controversy around peels and it can be a confusing topic. Uh, it can be very intimidating to consider doing a peel at home and, um, and peels can be done wrong at home if you choose the wrong kind of peel solution and peel strength. So today we're going to talk about prepping your skin for a peel, choosing the right kind of peel solutions for your skin, and then what to do post peel with your skin. So let's dive right in there. So right off the bat, let me just talk a bit about peels. Why do we want to do peels? Well, we know that if you do a couple of peels a year to just remove that top layer of dead, dull, dry skin cells, um, it really improves the skin and it's a cancer prevention. It helps to remove any cells that are just starting to get funny ideas and wanting to do the wrong things. It just removes those from the skin. So it's a good idea to do. There is um, a wide range of ideas of what people think a peel is. So peels can range in your mind and in reality from a peel where you just have a light exfoliation, the skin looks nice and shiny and glowy, um, to a peel where after you do the peel, three days later, your skin starts to get a little dry and a little flaky and you have some little peel things rolling off the skin. Any of those are fine. If you're my age, you know, you're getting onto your 60s, you might remember, uh, even as little as 10 years ago, people were really using harsh peels. A lot of people were going to dermatologists and they were getting very strong peels to where they had to stay home, they had to stay out of the sun, their whole face would hurt and be painful and flake and peel very deeply and they'd get scabs and things all over the face. And that really scared a lot of us. A lot of people were afraid to get a peel because that sounded so intense, but there were a few real uh, gung-ho people that said, hey, I'll do anything, I'll try it. Well, what we've learned from those times is that inflammation causes aging. So when you do a peel that is so strong that your skin has scabs on it, it's peeling off, it's all red and inflamed, you are causing so much inflammation that you are really negating the benefits of the exfoliation that you're getting. So even for us um, estheticians 10 years ago, we were doing, and many are still doing, um, a lot of peels where, like I said, three days later, your skin is flaking all over. Our goal now, though, is to do that with as little inflammation as possible. So we want as little redness as possible, little swelling or um, rashing, all that. We want to minimize that as much as possible whenever we're doing a peel. And the peels that I'm going to show you today... Um, some of them can be just about as strong as what you would get at an esthetician's office. But my goal with the peels that I put together is that they are going to cause very little inflammation. Now, there's always the chance that when you do a peel, you might get a little more exfoliation in one place or another, and you might get a little bit rashy or red. Um, that can happen. And all we do when we when we have that happen is we put some soothing products on that spot, we just really baby it. And we'll be talking about that with post peel care. Now, my favorite way, I mean, my thing is I want no downtime. So I want you guys to be able to do a light peel on yourself. I want, don't want to have the fear or the possibility of damaging the skin. If you use a peel solution that is too strong on your own skin, um, for instance, if you go on eBay and you buy some trichloracetic acid or some really strong um, uh, glycolic acid, you can actually use something that's too strong or put on too many layers. I'll tell you, when we do TCA peels in the studio, we put on three to seven layers, and I will do that on a client, and I can see with my eyes directly on their skin, and I know when to stop and when we've done enough, and we're gonna get a really nice solid flakiness all over. I don't do that on myself. And there's a reason I don't do that on myself, and because when you look in a mirror, you cannot see 
the same thing that you can see when you're looking at someone's directly at someone's bare skin. So years ago, I tried it. I did a TCA peel on myself. I did a couple of layers and I thought, oh, you know, my skin's doing fine. I'm not seeing any signs of what we call in the aesthetic world a frost. And I actually ended up hyperpigmenting myself because if you overdo a peel and it's too strong, you can end up actually damaging the cells and making the skin underneath it more reactive and more sensitive and it actually flared up. Some of the spots that I have even today are tender areas from doing that TCA peel on myself one time. So the products that I have chosen for you guys are products that you don't have to worry about doing that or you're not going to hurt yourself. So pre-peel, how do you prep your skin? Well, let's talk about a little bit about how often to do a peel. So we have some peel systems and I'll show you today where you can do one peel a week for four weeks. And I love to do that. I love to kick off a peel by doing that once a week for four weeks, do the peel system. You're gonna get a really nice light exfoliation that continues to lift off layers of old dead skin cells. Once you've done that, I like to do a peel once a month. So if you're one of those people, maybe you purchased our goat milk peel in the past, um, do it once a week for four weeks. And then after that, just do it once a month for a while. And then maybe six months later, do it once a week again for four weeks. So you're just spreading that out. You're being really gentle with your skin and you're not overstimulating, you're not thinning the skin, you're not causing inflammation, you're doing it in a nice, sensible way. So I'm gonna just show you a system today where you could do it once a week, or you could choose to do it once per month. And I put together a couple different peel systems, I'm super excited about it, but let's back up again here. So pre-peel, what do you need to know? If you're using tretinoin, or retinol serum, or you're using daily acid corrective serums, you're gonna to wanna to take a break from those for three to seven days. Now, obviously the stronger the tretinoin you're using or the stronger the acid serums you're using on a daily basis, um, the longer time you're gonna to wanna to wait before doing your peel. I use an Emma Pell night cream, it has some retinol, I'll wait for me, it's a three day wait, but when I first started with that system in the first two to three months on that Emma Pell night cream, I probably would have waited a full seven days before doing my peel because my skin was just getting used to the retinol and I know my, knew my skin was just a little bit more reactive. In fact, I think some of you guys might remember when I did do a, an enzyme peel when my skin <laughs> wasn't ready for it yet. I gave myself a good peel. We talk, talked about it in an earlier live session. So generally you're going to want to wait three to seven days, take a break from those things, and then do your peel, especially if you're brand new at it. As you're doing it, you're going to get to know your skin and you'll get to know how many layers of these peels you can put on and, um, and you'll get to figure out how long to wait after you've stopped your retinol before you do your peel. So number two thing that I really need to stress with you guys is cleansing. Um, cleansing, I'm just always harping this cleansing thing, right? Last week I had someone reach out to me whose cavapla was not foaming. And I just had to go through all the steps trying to figure out what, why it wasn't foaming. And she was using totally compatible serums under it. It should have been foaming. But the key thing is cleansing. Your skin has to be really clean um, for the cavapla to foam. And that means doing, going and finding my video and learning how to do that two minute deep cleansing massage so that your skin is really clean. It's the same thing with a peel. In fact, I say to do your cleanse twice. And the first time really do that good cleanse so that your skin is really super clean. Skin that is not clean will not accept and pull in the peel solutions. And so you're not going to get a really nice um, exfoliation from your treatment. The number two thing for pre prepping for your peel, good cleanse, and then what I recommend is using a brightening toner as your degreaser, because we want to degrease the skin. We want to get all the oils off the skin so that that uh, peel solution can penetrate. And what I like to use is from Rhonda Allison. This is brightening pigment lotion. So brightening pigment lotion 
has bellus perennis in it, arbutin, all kinds of great ingredients that stop hyperpigmentation. So if you're one of those people that's just prone to a little hyperpigmentation here and there, you're always gonna wanna prep for your peel using this brightening pigment tonic. Okay, and use it with the two inch toner pads. I'll show you what they look like right here. We sell these on our website. These are a really nice gauze toner pad and they, you can use it to really work the tonic into the skin. Now, once you've done that, you are prepped and you're ready to go. So I have a few different peels that I wanna show you guys today. One of them, I thought I had it here in the studio, but I used the last one, it's gone. So I've already mentioned it and I'll have it in the notes in the description if you're a beginner peel person. You've never done a peel on your skin before, and maybe even you have sensitive skin. The very first peel to start with is from Dr. Este, and it's the goat milk peel. The goat milk peel has a really nice solution and a brush, so you can put it on your skin, and then you um, and then there's a goat milk ampule that you can put on afterwards. You put on a good thick layer after you've done your peel, and then you apply it for the next few days. And if you get any little light flakies, you just apply your goat milk peel, and it's so easy, so beautiful, easy to use. I am going to demonstrate a peel today, and right up to this very minute, I'm deciding which one I'm going to do. So next step up, once you have done the goat milk peel and you've got a little experience under your belt, I'm gonna show you a peel that you can do. And I'm gonna give you some different options. So right now I'm degreasing my skin. I'm using the brightening pigment tonic, massaging in really well. And it's been a few hours since I cleansed, but I don't want to cleanse with you guys again on video. Every week you see me washing my face. I didn't want to do that today. So I did that beforehand, but I really want to make sure and decrease. So you can see when I use toner, I really work it into the skin. I go for it. Now, Many peels, especially if they're a vitamin A peel or retinol peel, if you put them on your neck, the neck gets really rashy and irritated. So I'm gonna show you what I use instead of vitamin A when I am wanting to peel my neck. I'm gonna do one more layer of my brightening tonic. Looking to see if I have my other, huh, I'm just gonna go for it. Here we go. Now, a few weeks ago, I showed you guys how to do the, the facelift facial. That actually, actually had, using the MBK Curve, that actually had an enzyme peel in it. So I'll put a link to that and you can go in and see how to do an enzyme peel. The peels that I'm gonna be doing today are chemical peels. They are natural chemicals. I don't use any chemicals that are toxic to your body, but if you want to do an enzyme peel, I use Regenzyme from Antiage and Resurface. And I will put a link in the description so that you can go there and see the recipe for doing an enzyme peel. And that's actually a nice way to start, um, get your feet wet in the hyper exfoliation mode. So, Today, I'm going to use, is clinical. This is their active peel system. It's really cool. I'm gonna open it up and show you. In your box, you have these, the peel system. You have one and you have two. I like to do these once a week when I'm getting going on, you know, when it's just time to lift off some dead skin, best times to do peel systems um, or a peel series is in the fall, winter, and spring. We don't want to do these peels in the summertime. During the summer, that would sensitize our skin, so we want to avoid that. So what I love about this system is it's so easy. Here we go. We've got number one. This is a salicylic based peel. 
peel. This peel is really good for a sensitive skin type. It's also really good for anyone who has hyperpigmentation or that gets hyperpigmentation from heat. This peel actually has a cooling sensation on the skin because of the salicylic in it. So I've got this nice little wipey. I'm working it into my skin. And it does, it feels tingly. Sometimes in the treatment room we call this stingly. Your skin feels a little stingly. And essentially what you want to do is keep massaging the, the wipe into your face for either three minutes or until it feels dry. It really only needs to stay on the skin for three minutes. So if your pat, your if your wipey is not dried out and you're still massaging it in at three minutes, then just go ahead and set it aside. So you just want to do it for three minutes. Sometimes, some people's skin soaks it up so fast that within two minutes, this pad is just dry. If that's your case, set it aside and then wait another minute before you do your next step. Getting all those little line areas, the nose, the frown lines, the forehead lines. I'm not using this on my eye tissue. The closest I'm going is my orbital bone. But I am getting those crow's feet and things on the sides. My neck, chest is a good thing to do. You don't have a shirt on. All right, so that's about three minutes. Set that aside. Now you grab number two. Number two has your hydration in it and it also has copper peptide in it. Fantastic. So in general, I see questions kind of popping up as we go, so I'll answer some as I'm going. Now I'm rubbing in number two. This is my hydration, my copper peptides, firming. How often to do a peel? Let's review that again. So some of these peels are designed to be used once a week. So you do a peel once a week for 30 days. After you've done that, what I recommend is doing a peel once a month. The older we are, the more often we should do these peels. And the younger we are, the more you can, the longer you can go in between. But as I said at the beginning, this is a really great um, cancer prevention. It really prevents that buildup of dull, dry, dead skin cells. Now I'm gonna customize this. I'm gonna customize this with another product. So you could layer, once this is dry, you could layer on a layer of retinol over the top. I wouldn't do it the first time because you've gotta find out how strong your skin and how your skin behaves. So the first time you use this peel, I love how cool it feels right now. It feels a very cooling sensation. Um, the first time you do this peel, just do it by itself. Test your skin, just do the one, step one and step two and be done. Um, ways to upgrade this peel, if you want to upgrade. One of my favorite ways to upgrade is with Clear Choice. This is their TCA Moisture Peel. I love TCA if it's done properly. TCA Moisture Peel is not too strong and it's lovely. TCA is trichlorocetic acid is what we mainly use with acne clients. And I love it, it's a vinegar, it comes from vinegar, and it's really mostly stays on the surface. So it's just gonna do this real nice surface peel. It just kind of kills any acid you're using. So when I say kill, don't get alarmed, but um, what an acid does is it goes and it kills those dead cells on the surface 
And once they're dead, they dry up, they shrivel up, and they shred, and they come off the skin. So um, two or three days from now, my skin's gonna feel a little dry, or maybe it even has a little bit of flakiness here and there, and that's good. That means that those skin cells are ready to come off. And then at that point, if you're having actual little flakes lifting off the skin, don't touch them. Put moisturizer on them and glue them back down. Let that skin fall off on its own. Never take a washcloth and scrub it off. Anything like that, just cleanse gently. And we'll talk about that in post peel in a moment. But when you actually get flakes, it's fine, but you don't want to peel them off. You want that baby skin to emerge slowly. So this is, I'm going to use uh, this TCA. This is a moisture peel. It's actually TCA in a moisture base. It's acne safe. And I'm going to apply this over the top of my active peel. Now this, you can see the instructions on my website for this TCA moisture peel. You could use it by itself. You can read the instructions for doing it for three nights, can't remember, three to five nights, wait, and then do it again for three to five nights. And that's a great thing to do to really test your skin and see how your skin reacts and how it likes the TCA moisture peel. I've been using this peel for a while, and so I know what I like to do is put it on top of other things. I wanna enhance it. So, and I'm using this instead of a retinol peel. We used to do a lot of retinol peels, but retinol really irritates the neck, and you'll end up with little rashes on the neck and irritation. It's not the end of the world, but it's not ideal. So this is a really great alternative to that. So essentially my peel is now done. That's it, that's how easy it is. But let me show you a few alternatives to using the is. So level one, start with goat milk peel, right? Level two, try the is clinical peel system. But I have a few other things that I can recommend that I've tried and that I really love. One of them is using for a peel solution, instead of using the Is Clinical, you could choose to use the Pure Herb. These are the little ampules that I love. These are the Caviar Lime Exfoliant. These have a ton of vitamin C in them and mandelic acid. So who likes mandelic acid? Anybody that needs brightening likes vitamin C and mandelic acid. Anyone with PIH, which is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, would love these um, the solution in this ampule. Um, anyone who wants um, a pore cleanse, you know, just a lightening and smoothing of the skin will love this solution. And the way to use this is you can put on one to three layers. So once you put on one layer, you let it dry. Then you put on a second layer, let it dry, and let, then put on a third layer and let it dry. Always in the beginning, start with just one or two layers and then see what your skin likes. It, this is really nice how this comes out. A few drops there. Can massage it into your skin. And it feels really great. There's no heat with these peels, so it's good for people with hyperpigmentation. Um, sensitive skin does fine with this. The nice thing about this with sensitive skin is you could just do one layer just do one layer. And then what I like to do, I like to do three layers of that pure caviar, let them dry each one in between, and then I put on my Clear Choice TCA Moisture Peel over the top. And I find I get a really nice peel with that. I don't get super flaky, it's just a, maybe a little bit of dryness as the skin comes off, but it really helps to pull up and lighten up the little dark pigmentation spots that we can get on our skin. So that is one option. Now, how about you ladies who have more blemish prone? What if you have acne? Um, this caviar would work for those who are just um, get inflamed blemishes. This would be fine for you. But what if you get those pebbles under the skin? So when you pull your skin tight, you see these little pebbles all over under the skin. That's actually called maturation arrest. And for clients that get that, what I recommend are our MA32 peel pads. Now, there are instructions for using these on my website using my peel method with these. So again, it's one to three pads. You'll take a pad, you massage it all over your face, let the skin dry, take another pad and massage all over the face. And if you've already done it before, do the first time, just do one pad. 
The second time you do it, do two pads. The third time, then try three pads so that you can find out what works best for your skin. This is probably the solution that's gonna give the most dryness and most flakiness afterward, which is what we want when we have those, pe those pebbles, maturation arrest under the skin, we actually want to get a thicker or deeper peel coming off the skin. So these are by Lalexo, they're on my website, and they 32 peel pads, one to three layers, let it dry completely, and then you have a choice. You can either put retinol on top of them, or you can put the TCA moisture peel on top of that and let it set. So, ah, here I have one more that I really love. This is a super easy one. Um, a lot of my movie stars, my actress clients, they love this combination. So this is the Skin Smoothing Gel from Rhonda Allison. This is a lactic and glycolic acid. And the people who love this, um, is when you have a special event or you feel like your skin texture is just rough and maybe your pores seem really too evident, too large. You just want to have that perfect Barbie skin. So I call this the Barbie skin and you'll see a list in the description, the skin smoothing Barbie skin peel. Um, what you do is you put on one to three layers of Rhonda Allison's skin smoothing gel, allowing the skin to dry in between each layer and then you can put on a layer of her beta a serum which is a retinol serum on top of it when you wake up the next morning your skin is just like i said it's like glass it's just so smooth it's so amazing um, so that's a really fun combination to do if you want to be able to also treat the neck instead of using the vitamin a then top it with a tca moisture peel and you will get an excellent result now the more layers of any of these you put on the more exfoliation you're gonna to create two or three days from now. So let's say you know you want your skin to have that poreless, perfect, perfection, beautiful look, and you don't want to have any of the dryness or any of the flaking, then do less. So if I were to do that, I would do one layer of this or one layer of this, and then one layer of the TCA moisture peel on top. And that's just gonna give me a really nice exfoliation that I can do midweek. It's gonna pep, prep my skin up, um, pep my skin up and have it looking really nice. Um, that's something that you can do. Um, as you learn to become your own esthetician and do these things at home, start slow. Start by just doing that. Just start by doing one layer of one of these or do our little peel system and not topping with anything else and just go slow and experiment and see what your skin really likes. Now, what do you do post peel for your skin? So after I've done this peel, I'm tonight, I'm not gonna use retinol tonight. I'm not gonna use any acids on my skin. In fact, I might wait two to three days before I do that. Now, three days from now, if my skin just feels fine, there's no flaking anywhere, maybe it's just a little bit dry, I might use a little bit of an enzyme. I might use Regenazyme just to remove any little dryness on the skin. Um, but during that three day period, post peel, I'm not gonna use acids on my skin. I'm not gonna use retinols on my skin. I'm not gonna use scrubs on my skin. I'm just gonna baby my skin. So choose a cleanser that doesn't have acid in it. My favorite, um, of course, you always need to be using your recovery from Neogenesis. You're gonna be wanting to put some stem cells on your skin, especially if you get dryness or you get some flaking. You wanna be putting your recovery serum on. And then I like to top it with uh, there's a couple things I like to top it with to put the moisture back in the skin. One is Saffron Meristem. It's fantastic for any peely, flaky skin. My granddaughter's been using this for the last three days because she got um, a lot of um, skiing. She got a lot of chapness on her skin from skiing and this is just taking all the redness out of it and the flakes are gone. Um, the, but that's not acne safe. If you need acne safe, go with the goat milk ampule. This is um, from Dr. Este. This is the same solution that comes in the goat milk peels and it's called Skin Refining Goat Milk Ampule. You can buy it on my website. You can take this with you, either one of these with you, and just keep adding more moisture throughout the day. Whenever you've done a little peel, if two or three days later, your skin is a little dry, flaky here and there, just keep putting these moisture elements on the skin throughout the day to keep it really moist and use an acid-free cleanser. 
that's all you really need to know for post peel with these products. Um, here's something I like to do. For those of you, I know a lot of you are now doing Emma Pell with me, right? You're on the Emma Pell night cream. Um, once a week, I've been doing this, but I, I've been on Emma Pell now, October, November, December, genre, almost six months. So my skin is pretty used to this night cream. I don't have to baby my skin at all. It's used to this night cream. So what I like to do once a week is I put on my night cream and then I put the TCA moisture peel over the top. And it just gives a little extra boost once a week when you wanna just you know, get your skin really um, glowing and what's the word I want? When you just wanna plump it up, you just want that extra special glow and pick me up, um, that's a good thing that you can do is, do I see Jace, Joseph on there? Joseph, I have not seen you in months. I'm so excited to see you're watching today. Um, Joseph has probably done one or two of these different peels in his experience with our skincare and he can pipe in and share with us which ones he's tried or which one he wants to try. So that is in a nutshell, um, some great peels that you can do right now for your skin. You can do one a week for the next four weeks or you could start in on a once a month um, system for yourself. Um, Let's see. Oh, I know what the next thing is I need to do is show you what our March rewards are. So let me show you that and then we'll dive into questions. So March rewards. I didn't grab all of them. I just grabbed a few. Let's turn the camera here. Let's see what I'm grabbing. Eh, it's kind of tough. It's back there. <laughs> so um, cool things on the website, MB1 from Neogenesis. What's cool about this? This is sprayed on as a finishing mist for anybody who has a tendency to get breakouts. This has your good bacteria that helps your um, balance your microbiome. So if you're using mandelic acids every day, you're using acne med at night, a lot of those can be hard on your skin barrier. MB1 is that product that helps to repair and replenish the natural microbiota on the skin. So we have that in the, re in the reward center for March. Um, this is from Rhonda Allison. I love this. This is the Cocoa Berry Sea Mask. So this is a really nice mask that has cocoa in it, which has a lot of copper peptides, and then it has a lot of antioxidants in it. Smells really great, feels really great on the skin. Okay, last week, um, someone asked a question about peptides and where to get peptides. And so we decided to stick the Michelle Corley. Um, this is the Rejuvenating Peptide and Stem Cell Serum. Now, the stem cells in this are plant stem cells. So I'm always educating you guys. So plant stem cells are antioxidants. They're not the same thing as stem cell cytokines like you get in Neogenesis or Antioch. So the Michelle Corley Peptide and stem cell serum has great antioxidant protection because of those stem cells from the plants and it also has the most complex and amazing big dose of peptides of anything that we've been able to find out there. So originally she put a, a formula similar to this, she made it for the eyes. And I told this story, I think last week, we loved it so much that we would put the eye serum all over our entire faces because those peptides were just so great. So eventually, Michelle listened to us. She always does, she's a fantastic formulator, and she created this one for the face. So you now have peptides to use all over the face. These peptides soften fine lines and wrinkles, plump the skin, um, good stuff. So that's in the reward center. What else? Oh, my skin buddy is our tool for the month, and but it's the white one. The White My Skin Buddy is in the reward center this month. You can use that for cleansing the skin and you can use it for um, penetrating your serums into the skin. Now, many of you have been letting me know and asking me, you wanted a device similar to that. 
uh, that you could use for rosacea or for hyperpigmentation. So you're needing a device that does not heat up. And I want you to know, we found it. I've been searching high and low and I found a device for you guys. It's not in the reward center, but I'll be talking about it more next week. It's a fantastic device. Even has green LED, which is excellent for hyperpigmentation, does not heat up. So it's not gonna cause any kind of inflammation or tr trigger any kind of hyperpigmentation. So. The other item in the reward center is from Sorella, and I know you guys love this stuff. It just smells so good. This is the Blueberry Milk Moisturizer. Beautiful glass jar, so it's earth friendly. This has peptides and vitamin C in it. It's a perfect moisturizer for those with normal to dry skin, and it's even acne safe. Pretty neat. Okay, what else do I have in here? Oh, Celine threw this at me as I was going out there. She said, this is so cool, and it is. This is from Bion. So my Bion fans, we have a gift for you in the reward center. It's this little kit, and it has the tinted mineral SPF, which is really fun. Um, it's a medium tint, so most anyone can use it. I've seen people who are really fair use it, and it just gives their skin a bit more color. Um, it's very moisturizing, it is not acne safe. So this is not your acne safe kit, but it's fantastic. For nighttime, we have the vitamin A. Their vitamin A is an antioxidant A. And, and that, by the way, this vitamin antioxidant A could be used over any of these peels. The way I did the TCA moisture peel, you could use this vitamin A complex over those if you want to do a vitamin A peel. And why? Vitamin A, why would we do that, right? So vitamin A pushes the peel solutions deeper into the skin, so you're gonna get a little deeper peel. But like I said, sometimes it's more irritating, so you can get some irritation around the neck. TCA stays more on the surface. It's not gonna drive those other peels um, as deeply as the vitamin A will, but it also is a really nice surface exfoliant. You also get the nighttime calcium. Um, this is acne safe, so it's a mix in this little bag. Bioessence, this is their nighttime calcium. As we get older, um, our skin, we get depleted of calcium and our skin even gets depleted of calcium. And when that happens, our skin doesn't shed the way it should. Uh, for instance, I've had older clients who I'm trying to peel their skin and I cannot get it to peel. And it's because they are low in calcium in their skin. And when we get them on this calcium cream at night, it helps to, um, it helps the skin to release those dead skin cells. So it's a, it helps with cell turnover in the way that it's just putting that calcium in that is needed in order for your skin to release and let go of those damaged cells. And then also love, love this, the line reducing complex. Line reducing complex, this is the favorite thing for those people who have the lines going back and forth across their forehead, really helps soften those lines, those expression lines. It's not gonna work on deep folds and permanent lines, okay? But it's great on, it will soften those, but where you see the most significance with line reducing complex is when you have expression lines that have not yet become fully deep permanent lines. Okay, there's lots of other great things in the reward center. So go there and check out, see what they are. And I have to tell you that we have a limit of supply of each thing. We try to get enough of everything, but when we run out of an item, it's gone. Sometimes we'll get more in real quickly and we'll add them back in, but if you see something you really want, all I'm saying is if you see something you really want, jump over there and get it right away. I'm gonna go grab my laptop right now because I didn't bring it over here, and I'm gonna check for questions. So if you have some questions, start typing them now. I'm gonna answer those. We are loading. Make sure the sound is off. No. 
Don't need to hear myself talking. Okay, good. I see some questions here. Let's dive in. Faye wants to know, what is the best type of facial to get in an office? A hydrofacial for clogged pores or chemical peel? You know, that really varies. So <laughs> it's so hard to say. Um, you know, a chemical peel can be really helpful if you've got a lot of congestion. Like I said, if you have the pebbles underneath the skin, um, then a peel is gonna be better for you because it's gonna loosen that stuff up. And then maybe what I would do is go in 10 to 14 days later and have the hydrofacial. Because if you do the peel first, it's gonna remove a lot of the skin cells, the top off, those really dried in black heads and everything, expose things. So that when you go in and have your hydrofacial, they're gonna be able to get more stuff out of your skin. So that's kind of the way I would do it. Can you apply anything after using the Is Clinical Peel, like serums or vitamin A? So yes, after the Is Clinical Peel, I use the TCA moisture, where is it? The TCA peel on top of it. You could use a vitamin A on top of it. Um, if you had to, if you're gonna go be going out for the day, then you would put sunscreen on top of it. But ideally, you would do this all in the evening and then go to sleep and sleep in it. So it gets that full eight hours sleeping with no sun exposure on it. Krista says, I love peels for my melasma. May I ask what your favorite vitamin C serum is? One that is great for melasma. Thank you, love your channel. Um, yes, so my favorite vitamin C, I have a few of them. So my two favorites are from Rhonda Allison. One is the C stem cell. And then there's, um, she changed the name. Let me get my list because she changed the name on it. Here I am looking up the name for you of the other vitamin C. We're all struggling learning the new names of everything. It's now called Vitabrite. I should be able to remember that. Vitabrite Elixir. So the Vitabrite Elixir has um, a really nice vitamin C in it. It also has melanin, natural melanin suppressants in it. Um, so that is one of my favorites. If you have a little um, stronger skin, I also really love these ampules I showed you today. The Pure Herb, the Caviar Lime Exfoliant. You can spot treat with these. These are a mandelic acid and vitamin C. So you could put on a regular vitamin C all over and then spot treat with these to do extra brightening, or you can do these all over. It just depends on the strength of your skin. Um, I like to spot treat with them during the day, and then at nighttime, I put it all over. So, so there's some different vitamin C's for you. Sherry says, how often can you do an enzyme peel? So it all depends, Sherry, on how deep your enzyme peel is going. If you get flakes, um, if you get some flakiness after your peel, then you need to wait at least 14 days before doing it again. Any kind of peel, whether it's a chemical peel or an enzyme peel, you need to wait a minimum of 14 days. We usually like to wait a full four weeks um, if we've stimulated a flaky kind of peel where you have actual flakes coming off the skin. Um, for an enzyme peel that you use where you don't see flakes coming off, your skin just gets radiant and glowing, you can do that once a week with no problem. Paula says, if I do the goat milk peel, will I quit using retinol during the month? How about devices? So sure, so if you're gonna do the goat milk peel and you're gonna do it once a week, then you're thinking about, yeah, but I use my retinol, should I stop for the month? No, what I would do is maybe cut your retinol use back to once a week. So you do your goat milk peel once a week and your retinol once a week. So you're just, um, maybe you do your goat milk peel on Saturday, then you do your retinol one night on Wednesday, 
and then you do your goat milk peel again the next Saturday. Something like that, just kind of staggering it and paying attention to your skin. Now, some people, if your skin's like, fine, no big deal, experiment. Try using your retinol um, serum two or three nights a week and doing the goat milk peel on the weekend and see if that works for your skin. Everybody's skin is different. It's just always best to start slow and then build up to see what you can do. For instance, I have many clients now using the Emma Pell as their nighttime retinol, but I have a few clients that just don't want to give up their tretinoin. They just love that stuff. And they're actually finding that they can layer them or do alternate nights and, and that works out. So you've really got to listen to your skin. There's no way I could have done that with this product, but other people can. I have another client who emailed me today getting started on Emma Pell and her skin is more sensitive. And so I had, I just have people start off with using it every single night. Then if we discover we have a little bit of redness or anything going on, then we back off and we do every other night and things like that. So with her, I'm backing up a little bit. Okay, now it's time to go every other night. Now the neat thing is about Emma Pell is that if you are one of those people that get little red spots or a little dryness right off the bat, it's actually something to be excited about because that means that you are gonna see the biggest results um, and the fastest results with the Emma Pell system. So anytime you have a lot of damaged skin cells on your face and you start using a retinol cream or a retinol serum, you are gonna stimulate the release of those spots. So some people get it really fast. They'll get like little red bot spots here and there and they'll think, oh no, this product isn't for me. Well, the truth is you need that product the most. We just maybe need to slow down and use it once a week or twice a week as we shed off those damaged cells. But you're gonna be one of those people that sees the most remarkable changes in your skin because your skin is gonna be so much healthier three months from now. So, I think I got off track a little bit. Let's see, up here. Oh, so yes, with the goat milk peel, do you have to quit using retinol? Maybe don't. You may be even able to top the goat milk peel with your retinol. So just experiment with that and see how it goes. Just start slow. With your devices, don't use a device to drive your product into the skin. So you're not gonna be um, put the solutions on and then when you use one of your devices, no. What you're gonna do is wait wait a day or two and then use your devices and it should not be a problem with any of these peels that I have here. Can you do the goat milk peel on the neck? Most people can, yes. It's gentle enough to use on the neck and it does not contain retinol. So you're in good, good shape for that. Okay, Joseph, sending you love, we missed you. Um, here's Sarah. For hyperpigmentation on a very light olive skin, what peels are best? So, well, of course, the goat milk peel would be excellent for you. These will be fine for you. Um, both of those are good choices for you. And also the purer will be fine for you. Just start by just doing one layer and seeing how your skin does. All of these are, are gentle enough to um, treat even hyperpigmented skin and hypersensitive skin. You just need to maybe start slow and add layers as you go, but they're all very active, very effective, yet very safe. Um, so like I said in the beginning, I look for peels that don't cause inflammation, don't cause heat in the skin, aren't gonna cause any rashing or hyperpigmentation or irritation. Deborah says, I use Trentanoin every night. Is it okay to do a peel? Yes, Deborah, you probably came in a bit late. What you need to do is take a break from your Trentanoin for three to seven days, depending on how sensitive your skin is. Maybe for the first time you do a peel, go a full seven days. Take a break from your Trentanoin and then do your peel. And then you wait. You don't restart applying your Trentanoin again until seven days after your skin um, has healed. So say on day three, you did a peel on day three, you're getting some flakiness. You are going to treat that carefully with the post peel products that I showed you and keep moisturizing. Once it stops the flaking, then you need to wait seven more days until you start back on your Trentanoin again. Let's 
So Sarah says, I alternate between, oh, now I skipped some people. There's so many questions coming in. This is great. What is the best anti-aging serum or device you recommend for reversing eye troughs, troughs, deepening and reddening, and which peel ingredients is advised for there? So um, I'm going to save that question, Sarah, um, on doing eye peels. I've talked about it in the past, but um, we will talk about that. I will bring it up. I'll do it again. We'll talk about it again. The best peel solution for the eyes is from Rhonda Allison, and it's called Moisture Eyezyme. There's also an Is Clinical Vitamin C Serum for the eyes that's really great for that area. Um, And then of course for the eyes, the eye rejuvenator from MBK. On my website you'll find it, it's excellent for treating drooping eyes, eye puffiness, um, just really getting um, that whole area detoxified, moving the lymph along, it's great. Parvin wants to know, do we see clients in person anymore? We do not. Um, with COVID, I mean, even the year before COVID, I actually had closed um, our brick and mortar. I had to make a decision um, of whether I wanted to just impact people in my own community or did I want to be able to reach the nation. And um, I had been in the treatment room for so long, I was really kind of ready for a little bit of a change. And so that's why um, I went to a nationwide voice. So coming to you through um, YouTube and I do my online consultations which I know Parvin you have done so I'm not doing treatments in a treatment room anymore except on um, when I'm testing products um, our lucky people that work at Art of Skin Care they get to have me do treatments on things when I'm on them family members I do that but everybody else I'm I had to make a decision to not do that anymore this person says, oh, Sarah says, she alternates between tretinoin and over-the-counter retinols. You know, most over-the-counter retinols I just wouldn't even use. If you're getting, if you mean like drugstore, I just not, they're kind of worthless. Um, if you're using a professional strength retinol um, from, you know, like Rhonda Allison or any of the retinols on my website, those are all professional strength like you would get um, from an esthetician or from a doctor's office, those are all great. Um, but I wouldn't use like one from a drugstore. It's just the quality, everything, it's just a waste. Um, and then how do you incorporate the peels? Like I said, take a break from it, then do your peel. Which peels for more mature skin? All of these can be used for mature skin. Start with the goat milk peel or start with the is clinical peel system either one of those are excellent for mature skin paula says right now she has a retinol that makes her peel a lot in three days yes so you're giving yourself a retinol peel every time you use it if that if you're having that then no if you're already peeling from the products that you're using that means you're exfoliating and you don't need to add one of these peels on top of that. Your goal right now is to be able to tolerate your retinol to use it at least three times a week. So right now you use it once a week and keep doing that until you're not stimulating a peel every time you use it, okay? Once um, you're not stimulating a peel, then bump it to two times a week and see how you do with that. If you skin peels at first, just stick with that. And then um, when it's not peeling from two times a week, then bump to three times a week. However, there are also some other things that you can do, some other tips around using retinol. For one, you could use Rhonda Allison's DNA reversal. Put that under your retinol. That really helps to mitigate the irritation that your skin gets from ret retinol. It really is nourishing and healing. Put that underneath your retinol serum. That may do the trick. Also, when using retinols, you've got to use more moisture. So maybe you need to get a moisture balm. Um, maybe you need to pick up um, Hale and Hush's Saffron Meristem Cream and put that on top of your retinol and use that at nighttime to help soothe and mitigate some of that irritation that you're getting from your retinol. Um, I, 
it's best to get the least amount of irritation in the long run, right? If you've been doing this for a long time and your skin's just not adjusting, your retinol's either too strong or you need to do some of these other things I've mentioned to help your skin cope with the retinol. We don't want to just be too aggressive every week. Um, for instance, with tretinoin, many people find that if you're just being too aggressive with that tretinoin, you are actually going to develop callousy kind of lines on your skin and a thicker callousy kind of skin cell forms and texture forms because your skin's trying to protect itself. And that's one of my main reasons why I don't recommend tretinoin because I've seen it in my treatment room too often. People who are using it too much and too strong and they think it's great right now but then when they hit 50 60 they've got this real callousy kind of thickened skin built up on here because their skin is trying to protect itself from that harshness of that product so we want to mitigate the irritation sarah says does the fact that i've never experienced the skin shedding that people speak of on retinol mean that i'm not experiencing the benefit um, between two years. No, it does not mean you're not experiencing the benefit. You probably are, but I would look at what kind of retinol you're using. So if you're using an over-the-counter retinol, then yeah, you're probably not getting a benefit. Um, there are retinaldehydes, retinol, retinol, tretinoin. It would really depend on what you're doing. If you're using a retinaldehyde or a bacuchiol, it might be time to step it up to a stronger retinol. Paula says, I'm having a hydrofacial on Thursday. Should I avoid my retinol since I react with peeling? Yes, you should avoid your retinol. Just take a break from it for three days prior to any kind of a facial service is a good idea. Or even if you're going to get um, brows waxed or anything like that, you want to take a break from your retinols for that. Okay, you guys. It's 1236, this has been a really fun, um, I'm glad you had so many great questions about all of this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close off now. I hope you have a wonderful week, rest of the week and weekend, and I will see you again next week. Take care.